Imagine your most personal conversations, your most private, intimate moments that you share with AI, and potentially business secrets being ordered to be preserved forever, even if you thought they were meant to be deleted. That's what's happened currently with the OpenAI case versus the New York Times. This is huge news if you are a user of OpenAI. Let me also say, this is huge news if you are a user of any of the cloud service providers of AI out there. And this channel does pride itself in showing you how to do this locally, and that is good reason why. And today is exactly one of the instances of why. Because now, people who had a feeling that they should have a preservation of their anonymity with their conversations, with their chat provider, OpenAI in this instance, have had that shattered by a broad sweeping court order. Not only is this kind of a huge PR issue, this is also a huge issue for privacy. I mean, OpenAI has users everywhere. These people may have their actual privacy and EU data privacy laws violated by this court order, there's going to be some huge changes and ramifications as a result of it. This is that wake-up call that this channel has been saying for a long time. You can avoid if you use local AI. While that may seem like something that's hard to do, this channel's also produced a lot of videos on technical guides, how-tos. You can find out things like setting up the software and guides based upon various budget points. And there's a lot of people that think, oh, you can't get the same capabilities. You can get all the capabilities locally. It does take some more effort, but you actually understand better the outcomes, what's going into making the outcomes, and at the end of the day, that can lead to some amazing results. There may be a caveat around code currently, and that may exist just because of the massive context windows that cloud providers with their massive fleets are able to provide, but look for local to close that gap. Local models, open weights, these are good things. Now, let's dive into some specifics around what's happened here. First off, there's an ongoing case. This is a copyright case. The court has ordered the preservation of all output log data. That means even if you have it at temporary, you think it's deleted, this goes back to May 13th, 2025, those are gonna have to have been preserved according to this court order. That's everything from OpenAI, all of those records. Why? So there's a couple of reasons why. One, they're looking at how the transformations of data is happening and whether that creates a large or a little competition to the original author of those copyrighted works. And certainly there is a potential in that for there to be a lot of decision making that could go in the favor of the New York Times. Access to this data probably gets uh, able, the ability to scrutinize it. It's not like this data is going to be made publicly available, but still, there is a second, and this could be kind of scary, it would be not limited to this case, but there is a second onus that you have to consider. What if you use this to produce something and the courts find that there was a copyright uh, violation on OpenAI's part? And Stream of Commerce, guess who now has been using those outputs in their product? What if you are using those outputs in your product? You could have yourself a potential to have some sort of a little nightmare also. That is not good. This is also compounded by the fact that I'm learning about this, many people are learning about this, based on a Hacker News article that came out yesterday. And where is OpenAI? Let's take a look here on OpenAI's timeline. May 12th here, okay. So this was ordered on May 13th. May 12th, let's take a look. Don't see anything. Next tweet, May 14th. Safety evaluations. Next, GPT 4.1 and 4.1 mini. Uh, okay, so I don't see anything here about disclosing, hey, by the way, there's now a preservation order on all chats. That seems like something that there should be. In my opinion, that is actually very critical information for end users. And the reason why is because knowing what's happening is part of building a trust that you would expect to have. And boy, this does not seem like it was got out in front of. As a matter of fact, I still don't see, even now, a pinned tweet about this. And that's not cool. I think definitely OpenAI needs to send out an email, needs to notify people. I mean, learning about this from open air, from Hacker News is not the way that people should be learning about this. This probably has some legs over the next couple of days also that they that now have to respond to instead of actually talking about proactively, they're gonna have to talk about it reactively. And that's not a good position to be in for PR. Just 
unsolicited corporate advice there for somebody. But let's say you're looking at this, the preservation is is geared at you. It's geared not just to what OpenAI's exposure is, it, it could be anybody's exposure. And I mean, if you're using this, if it's operationally transforming, if you're also found to have something that competes highly, and if OpenAI loses this case, well, there could be a lot on the line. I'm not gonna LARP as a lawyer. There's no reason for me to do that. You can do that in the comments below, but I'm not gonna do that. I would say I could be wrong here, but this is something that definitely does seem like it has a lot of potential and is one of the biggest reasons that in privacy and also the fact that your data, your private data is going to be one of the last most valuable things to you on this planet. Trust me on that. I've been saying and calling these things for a while. I don't like to take victory laps. Really, that's not my game, but I do like to point out when I am correct. And I have been right now on privacy being a very important factor and also business viability of cloud definitely has some implications that now it looks like you better be taking pretty darn seriously. How, how does this actually impact other cloud providers is a pretty good question. Now, this dates back to the Google Books case is kind of the argument that OpenAI is following along. And there is good precedent there that would potentially favor OpenAI in this. Now, Google Books, if you are familiar with that product when it came out, it didn't really give you the entire corpus of the text. You couldn't download the, 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 the textbook. It gave you like a page, sometimes a paragraph, sometimes a sentence. It gave you links to further information about it if you would be able to get it. It was definitely, in my opinion, something that has fostered where we're at now. It could This all could have been resolved a long time ago had the ruling on the Google Books case been that Google had violated some sort of a uh, copyright infringement when they did that. It went the other way, and as a result, we're now here deciding what level of transformation is going to be needed to define this now competes with the copyright holder. And if, if it strongly competes, the product that's produced in the transformation stage, let's call that the training stage or the utilization of trained outputs stage, if that competes heavily with the original copyright holder, that makes the argument quite a bit harder. Now, Google definitely probably in my opinion, as far as cloud providers out there, has one of the best groups of people that I'm sure know how to walk this line very finely because they've already gone through the case. They have a lot of understanding of it and they probably have pretty good application of that history to their ongoing activities. So they probably have a really good idea. Hey, don't whatever, let this reproduce an entire chapter of a book if somebody asks for a chapter of a book and it's a copyrighted, currently copyrighted piece of material. Also, if there's proprietary information that somebody has posted somewhere in a book that is not available elsewhere, and only that knowledge would be able to produce an output, well, that's actually fairly trackable also. That one's a little bit harder to find, but there is some broad implications to this that are gonna be coming out. Now, where the training data came from for OpenAI, for Meta, we're starting to see where Meta's came from. Uh, yeah, we're starting to see where Meta's came from. And that, fasc that fascinating case, that one is almost more fascinating than OpenAI. I mean, seeing their engineers talk about, hey, I, I, we need to seed out if we want to get this download to go faster. It's funny and comical, to be honest with you. Whether or not OpenAI did that, I, I, it, I don't know. I, I haven't been able to find anything about exactly how they sourced their information and got their information. But definitely scraping the web is something that has been engaged in by all of these companies. And that's something that when you look at where is the transformation or the accreditation or the link back to an author becomes very important. I'm actually fairly happy and pleased with the way Google has been ha handling this. OpenAI does a pretty decent job with my content and linking back to me. Anthropic and Claude, I have no idea about. And Meta doesn't seem to really do that for my content, but I don't think they've actually ingested my content. Those are my takes on where the state of those things are currently. Certainly, if you look at like XAI and Grok, they have a huge corpus. I always said this, it, it's really a play for data in X, uh, Twitter in the past, was a play for data. That's one of the largest continual real life, there's a lot of bots, uh, real life uh, data streams that's out there. Continual update, continual commentary on news. Uh, you've agreed usually for that transformation to happen when you go onto those platforms. So you create content on a web two or something like that social media site, you understand your inputs you're providing there likely have a lot that could be outputs also 
and you've assigned them the right to do that. That's usually what that licensing broad, all-encompassing right is. I urge everybody, be very careful about signing anything and do read your terms of service. It actually is really important. And this is one of the reasons why. So we have that as a concern. The EU. I mean, OpenAI is pretty big everywhere. OpenAI was available in the EU. Is it going to stay that way? That's a very good question. And having this preservation order from a U.S. court impact everybody, everywhere, carte blanche, is going to have a lot of ramifications, in particularly the, the, the EU. I don't know when we see that happening, but my guess is this information is fairly fresh out there, but it's actually not fairly fresh out there. It's like May 13th, so it's fairly delayed in getting out there. That, that right there is not good. Learning about something from Ars Technica's article that was linked on Hacker News, not necessarily the best way to uh, get, get information. Would you, if you're an OpenAI user, have preferred to have been sent an email? It's a decent question. And do know, this means there's a track ID with the conversation, probably an IP, probably the key that's making the request if you're going through an API, or your user ID. It's very identifiable what's happened here. This is what this is one of the reasons that I mean do you, do you trust the cloud? Do you trust the cloud? Just use the cloud. And for all the people who've come in the comments and been like shouldn't you just use the cloud? The cloud is what you should use. Don't bother with local AI. This is my moment of saying, "Oh yeah? Well, how about this?" Because now you're seeing the real ramifications of the ripple effects of copyright come down, and that is very predictable. I want to also take this chance to throw a huge hat off to the AI2 labs and things like OMO, fantastic models, really good quality on them, have reviewed them in the past, probably review them again in the future. I would say that when you're looking at things like Llama, Meta, oh boy, the transformation is where it's all going to come down. And I could be wrong, this could all cut the way in, in favor of open AI and be nothing. It really could be. And there's a ton of money behind this. I think it's actually interesting though. I would imagine that Google, with their Gemini products, has a very good idea of the line that they could walk, whereas OpenAI may not have had that line. Meta, I don't understand what that excuse is all about. I don't even know if there is an excuse that is possible at this point for that kind of data acquisition but it does look like there's going to be major, major ramifications from this. And if you are a user of OpenAI, take this moment and drop a comment below. I mean, I have API keys through OpenRouter, so I could just go to whatever, you know, you just pay credits, go through OpenRouter. I mean, I've never used it for any commercial products, but I would be very scared now if I had used it for commercial products. This is a huge walk on people's privacy also. And this is a good wake up call. This is exactly what can happen with an order in the cloud and you literally don't control your outputs if you are in the cloud. It is somebody else controlling your outputs. And you are at the mercy of that provider to inform you if there is a change to something like the terms of use or the privacy policy that impacts you as a user. So, I mean, I, I'm unaware of it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that those things have happened yet. And I definitely think an email should have been something that was sent out to everybody out there. So these are my concerns. This is my actual moment of saying, this is a good call to action. Run your own local AI. I do local AI reviews. I, you can follow along with my local AI server ultimate setup guide, open web UI and Proxmox. Makes things so simple. If you want a advanced system, you would probably go this rate. And even when you want to do something like update it, super simple, just type update, it'll pull down the update and you're done. I get that question all the time. So I wanted to make sure that people aren't manually trying to tinker and update this LXC container in the latest guide. A lot of people have tried to do that. And in the end, unfortunately, if you messed it up, you probably just gotta go back and reinstall it. Make sure you take a snapshot. That's always a good thing. Or have Proxmox backup server. Highly extensible, very flexible way to do it. On the lower tech side, if you wanna just get up and going and you don't really care, anything LLM or LM Studio, great options. If you're a single user, just want to use it on your desktop, don't have multiple users throughout the house, don't need to present it as a web service that you can have people go through, don't need really advanced complex workflows. You can still do things like NAN through it also, so it gives you a lot of capabilities. But definitely, I think you should, if you are interested in getting into AI, follow along with some of those guides. You can check out some of the build guides that I've put together, and that can get you up and running in really short order. Literally two to three videos, probably could get you up and running. Weekend project. 
I like the sound of that. So make sure you drop your comments down below. I want to shout out to the members of the channel. Huge thank you for all of everybody that has uh, joined as a member. Really do appreciate it. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, consider doing that. Also, thanks everybody that shares this out there. Thanks everybody that hits that bell. And thanks everybody that gives me a thumbs up and a likes on this also. Really do appreciate those things also. I think this is a watershed moment. What happens next for OpenAI is going to be the bellwether. I don't even know what to call this. This is like privacy violation at the same time it's like court-ordered privacy violation. At the same time, it's you can't overcome this court-ordered privacy violation. The US courts are not gonna care that this violates EU stuff. And so what is the EU's response gonna be? This is not the ride that people should be on for their AI. You can export your chats and you can import your chats into things like Open Web UI. so keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, I look forward to reading these comments. Pretty big moment. And definitely, I hope we see that this provides a little bit more clarity where the Google Books case, in my opinion, fell a little bit short on providing clarity around what level of transformation. This has been one of the biggest kind of longstanding copyright things out there. This could be the moment where we see that solved. Everybody have a great rest of your day, and I will check you out next time.